That being the case, let me go ahead and once again, welcome you all to this webinar. I am Ash Anderson, your Director of Education, and I have been putting together these sorts of Lodge Officer Training Webinars for all of our system divisions and federations to give everyone a baseline of terms and key concepts that we can all use to develop ourselves in our Lodge offices and to develop each other. We may not be able to tackle some of the very deep issues tonight, but we should be able to cover a lot of great information about how you guys do what you do at the local lodge level. I will have a brief presentation, and then I will give the floor over to our two field auditors, Joe and Eric, to give you their perspective on things they see from their end as BMDD field auditors, things that you can also use at your local lodge level to help you do a better job. After that, we'll open up the floor for you know, any input or guidance from our Unified System Division Officers or Vice President Galen Olin, who has also joined us tonight. And then we will open the floor up for any questions, comments, or topics for discussion that any of our participants have. That being the case, I do expect this to last about an hour, um, but I will remain with this webinar as long as you have questions or topics you want to discuss. That being the case, I'm going to go ahead and share my presentation now so I can get us all going. All right, so again, welcome to our introductory webinar for Lodge Secretaries and Audit Committees. Our union acts, it is what we do together, whether that's at the local lodge level, the unified system division, or all the way up at our national division level, we all perform certain work that moves our mission and values forward. At the local lodge level, you are an important part of what we do. Our lodge secretaries and audit committees you are important for making sure that we have the means to support our actions at both the lodge level and all through our union. Your work is vital to ensuring our union is transparent and keeps our members informed and able to conduct the business that they choose to conduct at the lodge level. Remember, if you're a lodge secretary, if you're new to the job, or even if you've done it for a while, you are not in this alone. Article 18, Section 13 of the BMW bylaws provides for folks to help you out. Of course, your lodge president and vice president are fundamentally responsible for everything your lodge does or fails to do, including uh, the submission of reports like the quarterly auto reports or uh, LM reports if you're unable to do so. So they'll be able to back you up if you need a hand. Your lodge may have a recording secretary who can help you by maintaining accurate records of your lodge business, which is important not only to keep your members informed, but also to ensure that you have a clear and accurate record in case down the road you get audited or questioned about the business the lodge conducts. Your lodge should have an audit committee and an audit committee chairperson should be at least three people on that audit committee per our bylaws. And those folks are there to help you every quarter to review and finalize your quarterly audit reports. Now, Joe and Eric will have some guidance for you on what that could look like if that works or not for you, but they are there within the bylaws to support the work you do. Of course, your unified system division officers and staff are also there to give you guidance and support to help bring new members on board, new officers on board, and develop you as you begin to take on the work you do at your local lodge level. And then we have our National Division Secretary, Treasury Department. We have Susan, Eric, Joe here with us tonight, but you have many more people in Novi who are here to help you succeed. And of course, we have folks like me at the Education Department and in other departments of the National Division who are here to back you up with the tools and resources we have available. Among those tools and support you have available are, of course, our bylaws, which every lodge should have a copy of those available. If not, you can download them from bmw.org, and I'll show you some things you can do to find that later. Every lodge should also have a copy of the Secretary Treasurer's Manual. Now, that is generally mailed to each Secretary Treasurer when they begin their work for their lodge. Um, if you do not have one, at a physical copy at your lodge level or with your Secretary Treasurer, uh, we can discuss that later, how we can get one in your hands. Do know that we will be revising and updating that Secretary Treasurer's Manual probably later this year. And so we're going to try to keep it up to date and relevant for the work you do. Of course, you can find both the bylaws and the manual on bmw.org, and I will show you some in more detail about how you can access that later in this webinar. Eric and Joe are two BMWD field auditors, are amazing subject matter experts for most all of the different tasks that you perform as a secretary treasurer or as a member of your audit committee, and so they are resources to help you guys succeed. 
We also have a lot of different videos that you can use to develop yourself as a secretary treasurer or to share with your lodge to develop everyone's understanding on YouTube. And I'll show you how to access those later on as well. But of course, the thing we do as union members and as railroaders is we teach each other. No one person in you can package up everything you need to know and give it to you. You're going to learn from each other and you're going to teach each other. And by connecting in ways like this or at your low edge meetings or unified system division level, you'll be able to give each other the tips, ticks, tricks, and techniques you need to succeed. Getting down to the brass tacks of it. As a secretary treasurer, which, you know, we'll be talking about their job. And sometimes the recording secretary will be sort of folded into this discussion and the audit committee will be tacked on, but we'll be concentrating a lot on what the secretary treasurer job does because they're kind of the linchpin of all of these different offices. As a secretary treasurer, you are uh, basically responsible for maintaining the accuracy of the dues and membership records for the members in your lodge. Now, I do understand a lot of what happens with our monthly dues doesn't even take place at the lodge level anymore because we have dues check off and we have reports that pass between the railroad, national division and unified system division. However, you do get records that we need to make sure we understand if they are accurate or if there are changes. Our secretary treasurers are the closest to our members to understand if somebody changes an address or if they change their status and get that information to the rest of the levels of our union quickly to make sure everyone is up to date. Our secretary treasurers are also uh, important in our local lodge meetings, not only to maintain a transparent and in well-informed union, but also to make sure we have accurate records of the business we conduct. Our local lodge financial records and our government reports are the responsibility of our secretary treasurer. And so things like maintaining the accounts, maintaining quarterly audit reports, and having that information for national division to work on and submit LM reports, those all fall in the secretary treasurer's wheelhouse. While it may not be something that our lodge secretary treasurers do every day, understanding the status of our members, whether they're working on furlough, on a medical leave of absence, is important to help them understand what benefits they may be able to claim or to access. So your understanding of the status of the members in your lodge and their condition and information will help them as they reach out for benefits. And that's an important job you can do to support all the other levels of our union. Of course, you are part of a team. So we have the local lodge level, which interacts at the USD with your officers and staff and at national division with our secretary treasurer department. And you will all support each other in maintaining accurate information about our membership and our work statuses. So any change that we have, there are several ways our folks can update their status, but it's important that you're a part of that process so that you not only maintain accurate records for your own lodge's business, but that we can pass those changes up and down the chain quickly. Things that you can do as secretary treasurer at your level every day is when you do receive reports, and you should be receiving monthly reports from National Division uh, about what dues have been remitted for your lodge and what members have paid those dues, you should check those reports against the roster for your, your active members to make sure to see if anybody missed out on a dues payment that month. That could mean that they're on a leave of absence or furlough, or there's something that happened that caused them to miss a dues checkoff payment. If so, you can help work with them and your unified system division staff to see if they need to be caught up to good standing or if there's something else we can do for them. You can follow up with members who've moved or changed their contact information. A lot of our folks think that the railroad updates the union about changes of address. They do not. It is up to our members to update their addresses, their emails, their phone numbers if they change. You can help us do that by just maintaining an understanding of the contact information for the members in your lodges. And if there are status changes, if you do know of a member who is away from work because they're sick or if they're on furlough, you can double check the work of your system division or the national division for those status changes to make sure they're up to date. In your local lodge meetings, as I said before, our secretary treasurers are key in making our meetings matter for our members. If, we, if our meetings matter, if they are relevant, if our members feel they accomplish something in going, then we'll have increased participation and engagement. As a secretary treasurer, 
the ways you can help that happen are making sure that our members are informed. So any correspondence or reports that you have to offer to our members at the lodge meeting, you can give them and that helps them make informed decisions and conduct business at the lodge level. That means that any correspondence you receive, either from USD, from National Division, or from other organizations, you bring to the lodge meeting and you report that so the folks know who's talking to the lodge and what they're saying. It is your job or the recording secretaries to keep accurate minutes of all the business you guys conduct. Now, there are some things that require a bit more detailed, nuanced approach and some things that we can talk about a little bit later on in the presentation. But those accurate records are important, not only for what you're doing day to day, but for years down the road, if you need to review the business that was done. And then, of course, you need to provide accurate reports on lodge finances. This is on for only for decision making at your lodge, but also for our legal obligations. Uh, the reports that we are required to file with the Department of Labor come ultimately from the accuracy of the reports and financial records you keep. At the local lodge level, when you do have a meeting, it is the responsibility of the Secretary Treasurer to get the meeting cards out. Our bylaws will tell you how far you, in advance your meeting cards must go out for certain kinds of meetings. For instance, coming up soon, your lodge will have either nomination or nomination and election meetings for new local lodge officers for next year. Those have specific times they need to be out by, and you're going to find that information in your bylaws. You may also use other methods. Some lodges use Facebook or a text tree or a phone tree to get the word out to their members to attend their lodge meetings, but these do not replace the meeting cards. That's so still the responsibility of the secretary treasurer to get those out. They merely supplement those. Getting cards out on time is vital, especially for something like lodge elections. Our members are required to have 15 days advance notice of a meeting for either nomination or election of lodge officers. That means that their, that meeting card needs to be in their mailbox or in their hand 15 days prior, not that you need to mail them 15 days prior. So depending on first class mail, which is one to five business days, you may need to get those postcards in the mail 20 days out before your elections. To help you out with the meeting cards, our website, bmw.org, and our membership services app has some great tools to support you. And I'm actually going to switch the screen I'm sharing to help show what that looks like. And so if I am on our website at bmw.org, I'm just going to go ahead and sign in under my login. If you are registered for member access to bmw.org, you can sign in and you'll get to this screen. When you do sign in, you'll have a bunch of information about yourself as a member. The secretary treasurer, you wanna look over here at the lodges members link. Clicking on that will give you access to a lot of other tools you can use. For instance, if you are looking for your secretary treasurer's manual, you can find a downloadable copy under the training tab under lodges members. You can also find other forms you may need as a lodge secretary treasurer, including quarterly audit reports, a copy of the bylaws, should you need it, your LM reports, if those aren't completed for you at National Division, and other reports you may need to ensure that your members are paid or their expenses are reimbursed for work they perform at the lodge level. So those are forms you can download. You can also find information about members or about officers in your lodge. However, I want to show you and I hope you find ways to figure out the meeting card business today. One of the first things you can do is you can order labels or cards from National Vision, which would be mailed to you at the Secretary Treasurer's address on file so that you can review them for accuracy and then put the postage on them, the postcard stamp, and get them mailed out to your members. I'm in Lodge 1320, so that's what's going to show for me, but you would think, make sure it's your lodge, and then you would choose what type of labels or what type of card you're looking for. If you're looking for meeting cards, you're going to go to card type. And if you're looking for uh, meeting cards for a lodge election, you're probably going to look for your active members and you're going to order how many you need. Your secretary treasurer's address will show up there. So you confirm that is correct. And then you could specify your meeting details. And here you would add information about when your meeting is, what time, the location, and then whether it's what kind of meeting it is. And generally, if you're looking for a large election or nomination meetings, you can be able to list it there or state some other purpose. After you get that done, you would hit submit, and that would generate an order at National Division where they would create those cards and mail them to you. You would review the cards, which should come for every active member of your lodge, make sure they're correct and accurate, 
put a postcard stamp on them and get them out the door. If you have a printer that you're able to use at your lodge level or at home and you can get reimbursed for, you can also print your own labels and cards. And this may be a faster thing to do uh, if you can do it. There you would just go to the print labels and cards tab. You would select your members and you would specify your lodge again. For cards, you would click on cards Avery 5689. This would create the template you're going to use to create those cards. Now you can find postcard stock at a place like Office Depot, Staples, or an office supply store. You can find it in packs and they're pretty inexpensive and you can get reimbursed from the lodge for that purchase. You would specify the return address you would use for these meeting cards, most likely your own as secretary treasurer. And again, you would specify your meeting date, your meeting time and location. In the purpose, you would probably have nominate or elect local lodge officers if that's the meeting you're going for, but you could also have any other meeting purpose there and put in a special reason. Say it's a family picnic or a Christmas party. You can put that in as well. One thing that this also gives you the chance to do if you are printing these cards is that you can click a box and that will create an automatic reminder for all of the active members of your lodge who have an email address or phone number on file and have signed up for e-alerts and i'll send them a reminder about your meeting three days before the meeting be careful when you do this because if you do a lot of false starts you're going to generate a lot of extra meeting reminders so only click that when you know you've got the information correct and you're ready to go because as soon as you hit submit the computer will generate that reminder so those are two different ways you can do uh, meeting cards for any of your meetings but especially for your upcoming lodge meetings and have them ready to go so you get them out in time to be within the bylaws date requirements other things you can do is once you have those lodge elections, you could submit your election results on the BMW Membership Services app. You just click next and it will walk you through the process. This will have hopefully prevent you from having to submit that triplet form that some folks never even seen before with that long list of union officers. You also have tools for other things you do as a secretary treasurer, and they're all available there. And I recommend that if you're not already signed up for member access, that you sign up for that and check it out. I'm going to go ahead and go back to our union homepage. And again, if you've not signed up for member access, make sure that you hit the not signed up, sign up now link and get signed up for that. But the other thing I wanted to show you was that if you click up here, you can see that YouTube button. You go ahead and click that YouTube button. That's going to take you directly to our BMWD YouTube channel. This is good for a lot of different things. But one of the things I definitely want to point out to you is that as a secretary treasurer, you have access to a lot of really good training videos put together uh, a few years ago that walk you through a lot of the stuff we're even going to be talking about tonight. You can either watch this on your own time or bring it to a lodge meeting again to bring everybody up to speed about the different jobs you do as secretary treasurer. Anything from quarterly audit reports to understanding your bank statements to how you can use local lodge funds. And so I strongly recommend you take a look at that YouTube channel when you have time. None of them are super long videos. They're all pretty short, but they're all very useful. Going back to our presentation here. As secretary treasurer or as your recording secretary, you're gonna be responsible for retaining the lodge records. Now, different kinds of records have different lengths of time you need to retain them. Some things are required to be held onto forever. Things like lodge minutes, things like authorizations or tax IDs, those sorts of things you need to hold on and pass along to future secretary treasurers. Other report, uh, documents need to be held on to for about seven years. You know, things like your LM reports, bank statements, things that may come up for future reporting. That's a seven year retention requirement. And then just depending on what you're looking at, you can find how long you need to hold on to it within the secretary treasurer's manual, which is where I pulled that uh, image right there. If you are keeping records, make sure you understand that it's you're keeping records not only for yourself, but for every member and officer in your lodge and for future officers and for other people who may need to inspect them. So make sure that you have a format that is clear and easy to understand what happened, what business was conducted and how it all went down. You need to offer a complete and thorough explanation of what expenses you approved, what business you transacted, what motions were made. Your president or your vice president will be running your lodge meeting. However, if you let them know what you need to get down. They can control the throttle on what's being discussed to make sure you get it down properly in your minutes. You want to make sure that 
someone else can understand your minutes. And that may mean that when you get time, you write out a clean hand copy or you type them up. Some lodges use a specified form. There's no union-wide specific form, but the USD or your lodge may have something that you tend to use that works pretty well. Again, with the correspondence, if your lodge receives letters from Unified System Division, from National Division, from other unions or other organizations, make sure you bring those to your lodge meeting and make sure you read them out to your members and get them in the minutes if they're required to be there. If there are other ways you keep your members informed, make sure you can be creative there. It's your lodge. You can use a Facebook page. You can use other systems, but make sure you're putting out accurate, vetted information that you're not just furthering on the grapevine and with gossip and hearsay. As a secretary treasurer, as a recording secretary, it's not your primary job to run the meeting or understand parliamentary procedure. That's the job of your president. However, if you have a good handle on how parliamentary procedure works, it can help you anticipate things you need to get down in the minutes. If you hear that people are putting up a motion or seconding that motion, you know there's some important business going on there that you need to get down in the minutes. And so maybe you might be able to just ask for a minute to get that down properly, make sure it's well recorded so that there's no confusion later. With your lodge's financial records, some of our lodges are very small. We have lodges, maybe just about a dozen people or so, all the way at the lodges with 200 people or more. Some lodges have a simple checking account, like the one I used to be in in Ottumwa, Iowa. Some lodges have complex savings with bonds, with all sorts of other assets. But as secretary treasurer, no matter what size it is, it's your responsibility to make sure it's all in order. You have help to do that, though, so don't feel like you're underwater. If, if you do need help, make sure you reach out. As a secretary treasurer, you are going to complete quarterly audit reports. Your audit committee is going to back you up on this. You should be able to meet with them at least once every quarter, take a look at everything, make sure it works out. Now, there's some wiggle room there, and Eric and Joe will be able to give you some more details on how that has to work to make sure your quarterly audit reports are submitted on time. But you should be able to get those in at every quarter. Remember that when we're talking a quarterly audit report, we're talking about a fiscal year. And so your quarterly audit reports look a little bit different from a regular calendar year. For instance, right now, we are in the second quarter of our fiscal year, which started in April. This fiscal year will go all the way through until March of 2024. And that's just the way it works for fiscal years. Joe and Eric will be able to tell you more about that. It's a just I don't actually understand the logic behind it myself, but I know that's the way it works, not only for our business here as secretary treasurers, but across the world with financial documents. When you're filling out your quarterly audit report, Joe and Eric will be able to provide you guidance on what this needs to look like, what should be there, what shouldn't be there. There's some stuff that you may never fill out at your lodge. There's some stuff that you may need to be very detailed on, but make sure if you do have a question that you know who to reach out to. And that would be Joe or Eric, whose contact information you can see posted here. And I'll also put it in the chat later on in this webinar. They're going to be here tonight to answer your questions as well. So feel free to lay it on them. If you put in your quarterly audit reports, if they're accurate, if you're up to date, if you support them with things like your lodge minutes or bank statements and get those in as part of the file, uh, a lot of times your LM reports, which are Department of Labor reports that we're obligated to provide, can be done for your lodge at the national division level. And Joe and Eric will be able to tell you more about how that needs to work. Again, if you plan ahead here, don't try to always be behind the eight ball. You can have less work and less stress to get these knocked out. There will be more training to come, especially starting next year for our new lodge officers, but don't expect this is all you'll ever get on how to be an effective lodge secretary. Uh, if you do have questions, make sure you reach out and make sure you take a look at your secretary's treasurer's manual if you want to have more guidance. For the, if you do have questions on, say you have a specific issue with paying lodge members or reimbursing them for work they've performed on behalf of your lodge or for some sort of activity at the system level. If you do have questions on government reports or say you're opening up a new account or changing signatories on the account, these are all things that our National Division Secretary Treasurer's Office team can help you out with. So make sure you have their number and know who to call. You can find information about how to contact anyone in our National Division at our directory, bmwe.org slash directory. Give you the contact information for all of our officers and staff at National Division. You can also find information probably about your system division officers and staff at the USD website. 
Remember that no matter what, the work you're doing as a secretary treasurer is vital to what we do at every level of our union. You have an important job and we are thankful and proud of you that you do it. Knowing that, how will you act? And that concludes my presentation. I'm gonna go ahead and stop share here and I'm gonna go ahead and switch over the floor to Joe and Eric. Gentlemen, please take it away. All right, thank you, Ash, for having Joe, Susan, and myself on here. Uh, Merrick Rose, uh, Joe and I are both the secretary treasurers of our local lodge. Uh, we're also from the tracks, and uh, so we know exactly how it is for you guys that you're out there and you're juggling both uh, that position and working on the tracks. Uh, I want to I want to jump right in. Um, I know I kind of. Uh, went long last time, so I want to jump right into the quarterly audit report, and then I think Joe is going to cover the two-year audit and the LM part. So I'm going to share my screen real quick and jump right into the quarterly audit report. Uh, this is a sample that we usually give out when we're doing our two-year audits to our secretaries, and uh, we send these back uh, to you guys when uh, we finish an audit on the lodge. Um, let's start right up at the top there with your system division and federation and your local lodge uh, number. And then coming down right on the assets and liability side, uh, line number one, money on hand and in the banks, checking and savings and CDs would go into this position. And uh, if you notice that we've got the quarter beginning and the quarter ending. Now this, like uh, Ash covered, this is basically uh, the beginning with the first quarter. Right now we're in the second quarter because we're in, uh, in the July through September uh, months. And then the third quarter would be October through December. And then the fourth quarter would be January and March. I know it's a little, little confusing, but the actual first quarter is April through June. And uh, we'll just use that as, as the example that we're, we're, we're doing right now. We're, we'll just pretend we're in the first quarter. So line one is money in hand and checking and savings and CDs. This is cash on hand. And uh, you would just look at your uh, your bank statements for April, the beginning of April, and uh, jot that down in line number one. Line number two, loans and, and notes. We don't we don't deal with loans or anything like that. So this is always going to be blank. Uh, threes are investments. This is savings bonds at face value, um, which we can store for free at National Division. We have a safe there that we can store those things, and we do for a lot of the lodges. So you don't have to uh, uh, rent uh, space at a bank for something like that. Uh, and then this would where you would also uh, put in your stocks. Uh, and in, in this example, we we're not showing anything for investments. Um, four is other assets, office equipment, computer, a laptop, a printer, anything over $100. We don't really do software because software only has a value of uh, a shelf life of only one year. So uh, this would be uh, basically your hardware. Uh, it could also be a... Uh, a briefcase or a, a filing system to uh, to put in all your uh, your your seven years worth of uh, paperwork that you're going to have, um, and uh, that can carry over to the quarter ending as well, unless you subtract, which I'll show you here at the end, if you subtract anything from your your assets. Uh, five, you're just going to add lines one through four and have that total here. Liabilities, we don't deal with. Six, seven, and uh, eight, we don't have to worry about. And then nine is basically carrying down from line five, uh, which would be your net assets. And it's basically uh, five through eight is your lines there. And then you would just write in the total here for your quarter beginning. And for your quarter ending, you would just look at the, for this example, you would look at your June 30th uh, bank statement and see what the uh, ending balance is and write that in. Uh, right there. And moving on to the receipts side on A, money on hand and in the bank's last report quarter ending. So that would basically be your, your uh, in this example, would be your March 31st bank statement. You would just put in that ending balance right there. Uh, B, receipts from dues. Joe and I don't really see much of this. Um, C, initiation fees. Um, this is all basically taken out at National Division now. We don't really see, I've never really seen anything uh, in C, A, or B uh, since I've been an auditor. And uh, D is cash received from National Division. This is your lodge refund check that you receive every quarter. 
And if uh, you're wondering why maybe you're not getting a lodge refund check, uh, there could be a couple of reasons. You're uh, not up to date with your quarterlies or uh, you're not up to date with lodge elections. Now, those are two things, uh, according to the bylaws, that you need to be current with to receive a lodge refund check for the lodge. Uh, we don't keep the money. It's just stored at National Division until you're caught up. And uh, then the lodge will, re you know, again, begin to receive their uh, lodge refund check. Uh, e cash receipt from system division and federation have only seen this one time since I've been an auditor. Uh, it's not really used anymore. Um, F is other receipts. FA would be interest that you're receiving on your accounts for your checking and your savings and your CDs. FB would be all other deposits to the lodge. This could be a raffle. This could be a uh, um, a law firm that you're having speak at the lodge meeting, and they uh, they wanted to give the lodge a donation to cover uh, the meal for the meeting, and, and you gave them time to speak at the meeting. Uh, one thing you might notice on the uh, quarterly audit report here, we kind of written in no weapons uh, for raffles. Uh, there is a way around that. Um, you know, Joe and I kind of uh, was working with another lodge earlier, and uh, what how they did it was they purchased uh, gift cards um, and basically it was uh, for a particular weapon, but that person that won the uh, the gift card had to actually go to the store, had the background check, have all that information uh, to the store before they were allowed to receive that weapon. So that way the secretary treasurer stays out of the equation. They're not held responsible if, if for God forbid, um, anything was to ever happen, uh, a robbery or, or something worse with that weapon. Uh, we just we're, we're just trying to protect the secretary treasurer. That's why Joe and I always say uh, no weapons unless you're going to do it the way uh, where they have to go to the store and get a background check. Um, total receipts is adding uh, lines A through F. And uh, so you would just take all these, add them all together, and then you'll come up with that number on the disbursement side. G fees uh, dues remitted to national division. Uh, I've never seen it. H fees and dues remitted to system division and federation. I I may have seen that one time. It's usually it's usually blank. I, A, and B is something we always see. This is payments to officers uh, or employees. Uh, if the if the lodge is actually paying for the an officer for a salary, then this is where you would show that. Uh, but we highly recommend that you just have national division take it out so they could do uh, take out the proper taxes. Uh, for that. Otherwise, you're going to be filling out another another form at the end of the year. Uh, payments to employees. This is a, in case uh, a lodge member who's not an officer picked up pizza and you want to reimburse them for the meeting. Um, that's where something like this would come into play. J taxes, you don't have to worry about. K lodge, uh, local lodge expenses. This is basically everything that is required to run the lodge. Stamps, meeting cards, envelopes, pens, ink for your printer, stuff like that. That's where the uh, where this would fall into the K. And this is something that would not need uh, lodge approval. This is something that you need to run the lodge. So you don't need to get um, your member's approval for something like this. L is contributions, Red Cross, Salvation Army, uh, toy for tots we see at Christmas time, uh, something that uh, you may want to uh, donate to a member that's in need that may be sick or or someone that's fallen on hard times. This is something that you would uh, uh, need lodge approval. You would need to have a meeting, have a motion, and, and then that's where you would cover this right here. Um, M is also something that would need uh, your lodge member's approval. Somebody would have to make a motion. Somebody would have to second it, and then you'd have to have... Um, uh, the vote and the and the the majority, and that's basically door prizes for meeting. I do that. I think Joe does that for his uh, lodge. We do door prizes to encourage uh, members to come. Uh, flowers for funeral. Uh, laptop. Uh, if you need a laptop for your lodge to handle uh, union business, a holiday party. Uh, my lodge just voted to have a picnic uh, coming up. So um, basically, we just needed somebody to make that motion, somebody to second the motion. And then um, we voted to, you know, for the majority to, uh, in which the majority did vote to have the lodge picnic. Uh, one thing I really want to cover real quick on on M, uh, other disbursements. If you are the recording secretary, as long as, as well as the uh, uh, lodge secretary treasurer, 
you really want to make sure uh, you're taking really good minutes. This is um, something Joe and I really, really, really preach, and we can't preach it enough. Make sure you write down who made that motion, who made, who second that motion, and then um, you really want to write down everything that was involved with that motion. I know when we voted to have the picnic, we discussed it first, everything that we wanted to do, like uh, um, where we're having it, how much are we spending, um, you know, and who are we inviting? I mean, we went through the whole thing before we actually made the motion. So uh, if you're ever audited by myself or Joe, or even worse, the Department of Labor, everything is recorded, everything's in the minutes, or God forbid, you know, you might have a somebody that comes to you in f five years from now and say, why did you, who's, who gave you permission to, to have a lodge picnic and blah, 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 and, and spend all this lodge money. Um, you've got it written down. You've got it in your minutes. That's why Ash said you keep your minutes indefinitely, just in case somebody comes along and asks you those questions, those particular questions. It's usually the person that never comes to a lodge meeting um, that likes to ask those questions. So um, always keep your minutes, keep them indefinitely. Um, and then, uh, and money on hand in the banks quarter ending, we're in that, that first quarter. So June, um, you would just look at that, uh, your, your ending balance for your banks and maintenance, write that in there. And then total disbursements, you're going to add lines G through N for that final total. Now, one thing to make sure that you're in balance is these, these, uh, line one and line A will always match line one on quarter ending side and N will always match. And then your total receipts and your total disbursements lines will always match. And if they don't, something went something went wrong and it, and it went astray there. And you might have to give Joe or I or call, we'll walk you through it or we'll 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 actually do it for you and then send you a copy of it so you can kind of uh, see where where uh where it might have went wrong. Uh Unused official dues receipts and on hand is usually, we usually write none. I think only one or two lodges still have this. Um, Secretary Treasurer's info, your audit uh, committee uh, with, with their, uh, um, where they affirm it and make sure that it's correct. You don't have to hold this up, hold the audit up, waiting for their approval. Just keep a copy with you, take it with the meeting. And then if you want, you can have your committee approve it then. Down here at the bottom is where we, um, Add and subtract assets, your office equipment. Uh, you would just basically, if you're adding something, you would just put a plus sign and then add printer and then the amount that you paid for it. And, or if you're taking something off, I think uh, I, uh, when I first started this position, there was a lot that still had a typewriter. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, you know, we, we, we definitely, you don't want to keep some of the stuff that is five, six, seven, ten 10 years or, or more. And so we got that off their assets so they wouldn't have to keep, you know, uh, putting it on the quarter ending side. And we got that off their assets. On the back side of the quarterly audit report, I'm going to, I don't usually fill out the back side myself. So I'm not going to sit here and preach to you guys to do it. Um, I know I don't. And it's really not necessary unless there's a reconciliation. Um, but other than that, uh, Joe and I can figure it out. And so we really don't. We don't we don't really preach the uh, the backside of the quarterly audit report. So this side in, entirely is not even necessary because of the bank statements. So you're going to fill this out. You're going to attach your three bank statements that correspond with the quarter. And if you want, it's not required, but if you want, and there's a method to the madness, you can attach your receipts, your minutes, and written checks, copies of checks that you did at that uh, during this quarter. Mail it to us. And, uh, and, you know, it's not required to send the receipts, the minutes and the copies of checks. But if you want, um, when Joe and I audit you and you get that list in the mail of everything that we need, you could just, that's basically covering everything that we will need to do the year and a half to two year audit. Um, so you could just give us a call and say, hey, you could just pull my records and, uh, um, do the audit that way, and, and then that way you're saving the lodge money. You don't have to ship us anything. Um, you don't have to send us anything because we'll already have it. So I am gonna, Joe. Do you uh, you want to cover anything on that? Uh, the only thing I want to add um, in regarding the quarterly audit report, um, 
if you're having trouble filling that out, you know, if you just want to give us a call or text us anytime, um, just send us, like Eric had said, bank statements, check images, copies of itemized re receipts. We can fill that quarterly report form out for you. Like Eric had said, we can send you a copy back. So you got a, ref a reference to go from to start your next quarterly report form. A lot of lodges, I mean, I know you, you know, you guys are out there working late, the crazy hours. Um, we don't mind if you just send us that stuff and we'll fill that report out for you. you know, I know a lot of it that Eric went over, you won't even utilize. Um, I know my, I'm a smaller lodge and you know we typically just have K expenses unless we send someone to some training or convention. So um, that's pretty much it for the quarterly reports. Um, I would say like Eric had touched on, if you get the year and a half to two year audit, letter in the mail. A lot of times, you know, if you do send those those quarterlies as we recommend with the bank statements, check images, receipts, a lot of times you can just give one of us a call and say, hey, I've been sending those quarterlies for you, for you like you've instructed. And we'll be like, okay, we'll pull your, your audit report file. And a lot of times we can probably do just about all of that uh, to your audit from your quarterlies that are on file. So, um, with that said, I'm just going to jump real quick into LMs before we start taking questions. Um, the LM report, uh, all that is, is the labor management report that's required every year by the Department of Labor. Um, what that is, it's your four quarterly reports that you submit. So like what we just finished was April 1 of 22 through March 31st of 23. Um, all four of those quarterlies are inputted electronically on the Department of Labor's website. And if everything is in-house, we will actually do that report for you. One less thing you have to worry about. Um, that report usually is due between April 1st to June 29th is a time frame we have to do that report on time. Um, usually once we hit June 1st is where I change to become a full-time uh, telemarketer. I'm constantly calling and emailing and texting. You get pretty annoyed with me, but I'm just trying to get those in to cover your guys' ass. And, you know, so the Department of Labor stays away from you guys as much as possible. So we're the good guys here. We're here to help you guys out day or night. Um, you can call, text us anytime. I know Eric and I always uh, are willing to accept those calls and text messages, even though we get some frowns from our, our wives from time to time. But um, we're just here to help and make your job as easy as possible. Um, most important thing you guys can do is to do the quarterly reports. I mean, if you submit those, we'll do the rest for you guys. Um, meeting minutes, real quick. Um, the postcards I meant. When you, if you have issues with those meeting cards, you can call or text us the info, and we can get, we can process those meeting cards for you on your behalf. Um, aside from that, I can open up for anyone that has questions. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Eric. Uh, looking at the time here, yes. I am gonna go ahead and open up the floor for discussion while I'm doing that. Uh, Susan, if you have anything you'd like to add to the conversation or I can also open up to our USD officers. Uh, if there's any guidance or points you would like to make sure we hit before we move on to open floor. All right, it is now an open floor. So if you are participating, you can either add your question to the chat or the Q&A, or you can unmute yourself and ask your question of Joe, Eric, Susan, your USD officers, or me. Uh, if you do that, please make sure you don't step on each other's mics. That's all I ask. And if we do get too many people, you can raise your virtual hand using the reactions tool in your browser or app. I do have Casey Peterson unmuted. So do you have a question? Yeah, so uh like every lodge has around the place uh sometimes you don't have like a quorum to do uh, picnics or other stuff like that but you've previously done and the members are expecting it to be done but you know nobody shows up so is that still acceptable uh 
so oh, yeah. just a little bit of clarification on that, Casey. So are you saying that there's a tradition or a, a customary expectation to have a, a, a party or a picnic, but there was no quorum to vote that in and approve that? Is that your question? Right. All right. Yeah, I think it's if you don't have a quorum, I think you're you're hanging yourself out there. Um, just because you did something last year does not make it okay to do it the following year. Um, take that a step farther. Like my local lodge, we'll put an umbrella when we had our first meeting of the year to cover to cover, you know, uh, lodge meetings at uh, such and such restaurant or to have gift cards at every meeting. So we're not revisiting that each and every meeting. Um, things like that, things like flowers, we'll put a, an umbrella for a year to cover immediate family. And, but at the same time, you gotta be mindful of the funds that you have and be willing and able, what you do for one member, you have to be willing and able to do that for all members. So just because you don't like someone, you can't hold a grudge and, you know, not be willing to do that for them as well. So as far as if you don't have a quorum, I wouldn't be doing a picnic or something in, in that nature. So Casey, okay, sorry, Casey, this is Galen Owen, Vice President, West Region. I just wanna make sure that we're understanding your question because I understood it just a little bit differently and I wanna make sure that we're, we're getting you the right answer. So I understood it as to maybe you're saying that you had a quorum at a previous meeting got approval to have the picnic and and the authority to spend the money for the picnic but then when you get to the picnic you don't have a quorum at the picnic was that what you're saying or sorry about that um yes and no so like the previous year we had uh a quorum to do picnics and you know we've lobbied to get extra money coming into the lodge to uh to do these picnics so i mean it's kind of i, I guess i'm hanging myself out there but uh nobody showed up to the last picnic so we didn't buy anything or nothing like that so i'm just covering my basis on some of that stuff i guess yeah, so Joe, just, just to clarify, is that different or is it more of the same? If, if they get approval, let's say they get approval to spend $500 to have a picnic at their next meeting, it's going to be in the middle of a park somewhere in, in Wyoming, can they go ahead and fund that picnic without the quorum being there at the picnic? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if you had the initial quorum when you made that, you know, made that uh, request to have a picnic, and you only got two, three, four guys that attend the picnic, then so be it. I would still have, you know, I would still have a lot of that to take place. Absolutely. Okay, that's that's what I was wanting to make sure. So but hopefully, you don't go ahead, Casey. Sorry, but if you don't have like a quorum, and you know it was discussed previously, but you didn't uh, put it to motion, then you shouldn't be having it, right? Correct. In order to make a mo in, order, in order to vote on something, you have to have a quorum. I know with some lodges, depending on the head count, it's difficult to have a quorum. Um, but that's definitely the rule of thumb is to have a quorum and and vote, and then if and then you can go ahead and proceed with whatever activity that you guys approved. Yeah, and if he if he even has a uh, like you said, Joe, if he did it at the beginning of the year, maybe he could say, we're, you know, with the next motion, Casey, you could say something like, uh, you know, we're going to have a lodge picnic for the next five years. That would, and then if that motion was approved, then you're covered for the next five years. So okay. as long as the, as long as you word it like that it, it, with a motion and a second, and that it's approved by the people that are attending, um, then, and you have a quorum, then you're good for the next five years. Like Joe said, put an umbrella over it and you, the way you word it, and then you'll be covered. Okay. All right. 
Uh, moving on from that question, uh, in the chat, the question came up, how long am I required to keep my lodge records? Uh, I put that answer in the chat as well. It basically depends on what kind of records you're trying to keep. Some things need to be kept forever. Things like your lodge minutes, uh, tax ID, things of that nature. Those need to be kept pretty much perpetually and passed on. They're heirlooms for your lodge. But other things like certain financial records, you only need to keep around for seven years. The things that uh, Eric was talking about before in his presentation. And then there are some things you only need to keep for three years. Now, the full list of those will be in the secretary treasurer's manual. If you have a specific record you're asking about, go ahead and put that back in the chat. It's an open floor. So any questions or topics you want to discuss tonight? And Susan Hunt also added to the uh, response for the question in the chat, uh, just reminding folks that bank statements, Q audits, receipts, those are the sorts of things you need to keep around for seven years at the lodge level. I had one more question about the lodge assets. Go ahead, Casey. And then I'll have Corey Ludwig who has a question too. So go ahead, Casey. So I do mine on uh, Quicken, so that stuff doesn't like necessarily show up. But uh, like I know I still show a typewriter and stuff like that, uh, or do I? How would I find that information out? Uh, Casey, we could we could address that uh, right now if you need to. Um, what what's your lodge number? In the interest of time, if you do have is issues specific to your lodge, uh, I would ask that maybe you email each other because I know we're getting short on time. We'll make sure everybody okay. gets a chance to ask their question. Uh, Corey Ludwig, I see you've unmuted yourself. Do you have a question? Yeah, I really liked uh, your guys' idea about sending the receipts and all that stuff at every uh, every quarter. Now, we used to send them, and I always fax mine to Eric. Uh, is that something we want to fax, or is that something we want to send a hard copy through the mail? to do that we don't we don't need originals Corey if you're uh, if you're sending to me through email or texting then uh, that's fine that's entirely uh, perfect because you're saving yourself time by not having to go to the post office and saving the lodge money by not having to mail anything so if you want to just continue to email or text yeah. or how, however you're doing it that's that's entirely fine yeah, I guess I do email it to you, but yeah, it does work. I just, I really do like that idea of including everything to make the audit process easier. So is there a way we could go back and do like previous quarters too, or do you want to just start that from like now? No, we, the, the, however you're doing it, uh, we'll just continue to keep doing it that way. And then whenever Joe or I get an, I have to get a notice to have to uh, audit you, then you could just let him or I know You've been sending everything in and I'll uh, just pull the records and and that's how we'll do your audit. Nope, sounds good. I appreciate it. All right, thanks, Corey. Another question in the chat came up. Any updates on the training sites? Where are we having them? So I cannot speak for the Unified System Division. If the USD puts on training at their level, you'd have to speak with your general chairman, Brian Rumler, or your system division officers. And I'll let them uh, talk about that if they have anything coming up. As far as national division training goes, there is no training in person scheduled for this year. The tra in person training will recommence in 2024. At this time, most of our training for the purposes of making sure we're mindful of our resources will be in Novi. And I will work with the system divisions and the lodges about how the co those costs are supposed to be distributed. If there is value in putting together some sort of training, Somewhere else, somewhere in USD territory, if we can get enough people there, I will work with USD officers and staff to see what location works best there, but we don't have anything identified at this time. So. Yeah. Sorry about that, Ash. I, I could address that, uh, Jose. As far as training internally in the USD, uh, we actually have a training session coming up uh, the beginning of next month in Chicago for our region two and our north side region four uh, officers. 
this training is called our local lodge leaders uh, training. And it's basically, um, we focus not so much on running a lodge, but we focus on the relationship between the system and the lodges themselves. This will be the second class we're doing with the USD. We did one previously in the Pacific Northwest for our lodges up in Portland in that area. Uh, we do have five additional ones planned that I would estimate we're probably going to do next year. Uh, but there will be one in the Rocky Mountain region, uh, one in Southern California, one in the Nebraska area, and definitely one down in our um, southeast region for our uh, southern region for um, lodges. So there is a lot of training on the on the the schedule for us on the USD. Uh, we're just kind of getting around to it uh, a little slower than I'd like to, but we definitely need to work within our budget and within our means, and that's that's kind of what we're doing. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate the uh, response there. Uh, also in the chat, a uh, question was asked about receiving the okay to buy a computer for the lodge. And Eric went ahead and answered that in the chat, that if you got an approval for an amount last year to buy a computer, but have not purchased one yet, you still have that approval. Uh, you're good to go to purchase it. And then we have another one here. Uh, Donovan Chi Lodge 1020. Don't have a clue on how to do my job as secretary treasurer. I'm getting intimidated on my position. Well, the good thing is, Donovan, you have a whole pile of people here who are ready to help you out. And so I know that there is a lot to cover and we probably just steamrolled a bunch of information at you right away. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. And so we will have that if you need to refer to it. We do have training videos for each specific job you might have to do on YouTube. So take a look at those. But make sure that if you do have a question or if you feel lost, you have Joe and Eric's email address in the chat. And you have mine right up here on the screen, education at bmd.org. If you have a question, feel free to reach out. We are here to help you out. So, yeah, Donovan, if you need anything, just give Joe or I a call. Our, our uh, cell phone numbers are in the in the chat there. We could walk you right through how to do it, or we can do a quarterly audit for you and uh, send you a copy of it so you know how to do it. And Susan Hunt also mentioned that she can also reach out to you this week as well, Donovan. So we've got a team of folks here to help. We're glad you're uh, taking on the responsibility, but we don't want to leave you hanging. All right. From the poll I put out there, uh, lots of folks seem to uh, respond that they would like to have more training on using bmwe.org. If I ran too fast through any of that, or if there are specific questions you'd like to ask about how to use the website resources, um, feel free to ask. Um, Training on Lodge Audits, Eric and Joe, I think, gave a really good presentation. So uh, feel free, you know, if we have any more stuff to dig into there. Um, but this is an open floor. I do see that we're getting close to 8 p.m. Central Time. And so I want to respect all of your time. I don't want to keep you here uh, the entire night. However, I will stick around as long as you folks have questions or topics you'd like to discuss. So it's an open floor. Go ahead. Question is, are old meeting places closed after COVID? Is it just my responsibility to find new places to meet or is it somebody else's responsibility? So your lodge president is responsible for running your lodge. And so you shouldn't alone have to figure out where you're gonna be meeting. Your lodge president, your vice president, everyone should be a, a part of that. If you need to reach out to other lodge members, you can get involved. Everyone in your lodge can be involved in helping you find places to meet. So that shouldn't be just on you as a secretary treasurer. I'd like to add to that also, Ash, on the USD, uh, we have a very um, a very prized uh, tradition of doing calls virtually also. Uh, we do Zoom calls, we do team calls, we even do um, just standard uh, conference calls. All those options are available to all of the lodges. A lot of them, a lot of our lodges use them regularly. Some don't use them at all. Other ones use them intermittently as they feel you know the need. But if, if that's something you guys want to do, if you want to do an informational call, uh, any of the officers would be more than happy to help you out with that. We could set it up and we've had really good luck with it. We get really good turnout on it because the members can join from wherever they are across the vast system. Um, and uh, there's usually a lot of good information shared on those calls. So that's an option also for any lodge on here with the USD.
I have nothing currently active in the Q&A. No one has unmuted themselves or raised their hand. And I have nothing further in the chat. It is an open floor. Okay, I do want to be respectful for people's time. And so uh, I do know we have Vice President Galen Owen and Vice President Stacey Moody Gilbert on our call this evening. Do you, either of you have any guidance or words you'd like to share with our participants tonight? Ash, I believe you guys did an excellent job on the guidance, so I'll just give a few words. I, I want to first thank you and, and Eric, uh, Joe, and, and Susan for all taking time out of your evening to get on here and educate our membership to the best of our ability. Uh, I appreciate these educational opportunities, and I hope the membership does as well. As well, I'd like to thank all the members that took time out of their evening to, to place their interest in this union and give their time tonight to uh, learn a little bit more about being a local lodge secretary treasurer. If there's anything I can do or, or any of the national division officers, I can speak on behalf of all of them, but I'll let Stacy speak for herself. Anything we can ever do for you, our numbers are in the directory. Our, our emails are in the directory. Feel free to contact us at any time. Thank you, guys. Stacy, you are muted. Okay, how's that? We can hear you now. Okay, I just want to echo everything that Galen has just said. Uh, it was very important uh, that we get these these positions filled at the local lodges. Um, always remember that you do have a very big support system. Uh, you know, not only with your system officers, the national officers, the auditors. Um, you know, Joe and and uh, Eric have really made this process very, very easy. Um, I've been a local lodge secretary for a long time, and the last few audits have been very easy and they're very helpful, very accessible. Um, so please reach out to your system officers, your national officers, whoever, um, you know, we're just here to support you. And, and thanks for your time and for, for getting on the call this evening. And thank you, Ash. Uh, any word, uh, Susan, if you have anything to offer, if you have any guidance or points for any of our participants tonight? Um, no, I think Joe and Eric handled it very well. Um, and all three of us are here if anybody ever needs to give us a call and we'll help any way we can. Thank you much. And I know we have several USD officers on tonight. Um, open floor, if you have any guidance or pointers you'd like to give to our participants. I'll just uh, say on behalf of the USD officers, um, you know, I believe I know everybody on the call tonight. If you guys don't know me, um, you could certainly uh, contact me. I'll put my number in the chat. Um, but myself, Mike Hallgren, Brian Rumler, uh, Paul Bellows is on tonight. Uh, we're available for you guys if you have help, you need help with your running your lodge, keeping the book straight, any advice on running those meetings. We're definitely there for you guys. And in addition, if you want to schedule any of these meetings virtually or anything like that, we could certainly help with that. So we're here to help uh, make you guys successful because really we we rely on the lodges. If the lodges do well, then we do well at the system level and that goes straight up the line to, uh, to Tony Cardwell. So thanks for getting on tonight, guys. All right. Thank you all for joining tonight for the webinar on being a lodge secretary. There will be a recording available for this uh, seminar or webinar. Uh, it's going to be available tomorrow, and I'll make sure that the USD officers have that in case any of our members need to take a look at it. There is contact information in the chat, or you can also uh, go to bmwe.org slash directory to find contact information for your USD officers, your National Division officers, and staff. That being the case, I will go ahead and end our meeting tonight. Thank you all again for your participation and for taking time out to be a part uh, a vital part of what we do as a union. Thank you.